Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine um, how to write the equation uh, given the foci and the covertex of an ellipse. So the first thing we want to do is identify, you know, do we have a major axis that's horizontal or vertical? So to do that, we need to at least write in the information that we have. OK, so the foci, which is at 4, 4, and 4, 14. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then at 4, 14. 4, uh, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. OK, so remember, these are the foci. And then the covert, one covert text is at 0, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. OK, now, what's nice about the information that we have is notice that the major axis, what lies on the major axis is the vertices, the foci, and the center. So therefore, I know that this has to be my uh, major axis. Therefore, my major axis is vertical. Since I know my major axis is vertical, I'm going to write the equation x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals 1. Since it's vertical, I'm going to have b squared under the x and a squared under the y. I'll get to the a and the b in just a second. Um, the next thing here is one covertice. Now notice that, again, when we're looking into trying to determine the center, right? And the center of an equation is in the form of hk. Well, th what's nice about the center is the center is the half distance between your two foci, as well as the half distance between your two covertices, and the half distance between your two vertices, which we ha don't have anything for yet. Um, so if I wanted to find just the half distance of my two foci, um, I can reason that my you know, center, I'd probably say the half distance is going to be somewhere right on here. Now, if since the covertex is 1, 2, 3, 4, four units away from the center, or at least the major axis, it has to be four units to the other side. One, two, three, four. On the other side. All right. Um, the next thing to also understand is that this is what we call the minor axis. And the minor axis and the major axis have to be perpendicular to each other. Now, let's get into some fun stuff. The distance from the center to our covertex is what we call, which we give the value of b. The distance from the center to the um, foci, or one of the um, focuses, is going to be c. So we don't have c in the equation, but we're going to need to know c to help us figure out what a is. Um, the center, we did determine, is going to be at 4, 9. So I'll say center is at 4, 9. That's the x and the y coordinate for my center. The value of b, the distance from the center to one of my covertexes, is going to be 0, is going to be 4. So oh, I'm sorry, let's write out uh, r. So I can say b is equal to 4, and a is going to be equal to the distance um, from my center to my vertice, which I don't have. However, there is a relationship of a, b, and c. So we have c squared is equal to a squared plus, I'm sorry, a squared minus b squared. So c squared, uh, which we know is the distance from the center to the foci, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I have 5 squared is equal to a squared, which we're trying to figure out, minus b squared, which would be 4 squared. All right, remember c is the distance from the center to foci, so that becomes 25 is equal to a squared minus 16. Now I'll add 16, add 16, and I get uh, 41 is equal to a squared. So therefore, ladies and gentlemen, um, a would be the square root of 41. So we know b squared is equal to 16, and a squared is equal to 41. So now we know what a squared is, b squared is, and our h and our k, which is our center, we can now write the equation, which would be x minus 4 um, divided by 16 plus y minus 9. Oh, I'm sorry, these are all squared. Divided by 41 equals 1. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you write the equation of ellipse given your foci and a covertex. Thanks.